हाय सायन हाय आदि दीदी हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड आप कैसे हो मैं भी ठीक हूं सो so, आज हम फंक्शन से कंटिन्यू करेंगे वे वी लेफ्ट द लिस्ट पासिंग अ लिस्ट टू अ फंक्शन या ओके सो पासिंग अ लिस्ट एज एन आर्ग्यूमेंट सो देर वॉज अ स्पेशल केस विद लिस्ट दैट आई हैड टू शो फॉर एग्जाम्पल ओवर हेयर द लिस्ट वी आर रिसीविंग आई से दैट फूड फूड जीरो इज इक्वल्स टू ऑरेंज देन देन वेन आई लूप एंड वेन एच आई टर्म इज प्रिंटेड देन आई विल गेट ऑरेंज आई विल गेट ऑरेंज बनाना एंड चेरी एंड वेन वी शो फ्रूट्स देन वी आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू गेट एप्पल बनाना एंड चेरी बट वी वुड एक्चुअली गेट ऑरेंज बनाना एंड चेरी सो सॉरी आई डेंट प्रिंट फ्रूट्स सो वेन वी शो फ्रूट्स what will happen we'll get orange banana and cherry even though we are changing food inside of the function it will actually change the list that we passed it why because a reference to the list is being passed so it's like create okay. food is like food is equals to fruits so whatever we say like it says in function before we did in parameters whatever value is passed it is basically that val uh, the variable is equals to that value now food yeah. it's in the internals it is doing food is equals to fruits and as we know it does not create a true copy like this it actually just creates a reference so that when we change that reference the original list has also changed okay understood yeah so if we want that the original list uh, list does not change then we'll have to say fruits dot copy and then send it so it will create a copy and then send the list or for example we okay. can use the list constructor like we saw in the copying list for like when we were reading our copying lists so we saw these two ways so if we send a copy then it would work fine yeah understood okay next we have return values so basically using the return statement we can return any value we want for example over here we are taking a parameter x and passing the arguments 3 5 9 and it's always returning 5 into x so what over here we'll get we'll get 5 into 3 or over here we'll get 5 into 5 and over here we will get mm, 5 into 9 so this is what the value function is the values that the function is returning and those values we are printing yeah okay yeah so we are getting 15 25 and 45 next there is the pass function uh, pass statement so whenever in a function uh, we don't want to do anything and we want to leave the function empty temporarily then we can use the pass keyword so no error will come if we don't give the pass keyword and leave the function empty then an error will come yes so we saw that error is this fine yeah yeah understood okay so next there is the positional only arguments so basically we can specify that a function can only have positional arguments or keyword arguments so we can specify that it should only have positional arguments or keyword arguments now if we don't add this slash for example y then what we can do we can say y equals to 2 and x is equals to 3 so we can change yeah. the order but if we add a slash then what will happen we'll have to give in the specific order only and we can't say x equals to 3 so we are getting an error we only have to give the arguments in order so we'll have to pass it like 3 okay understood yeah and uh, then like so when you add a slash then it does not like allow you to add the 
argument by name and uh, keyword ar- uh, keyword only arguments is basically a uh, star symbol before all the arguments so a star before the arguments that was a slash after the arguments this is a star before the arguments so you will have to pass it like x equals to 3 y equals to 2 etc you can't say just directly 3 and directly 3 will bring an error yeah okay so so we can also combine positional only and keyword only arguments so what we are seeing over here in this function we are seeing that a and b that are before the slash should be positional only arguments meaning we can't say a equals to 5 b equals to 6 we have to pass it on this specific position uh, and then star is saying that they are only keyword arguments so they are keyword only arguments so c and d are keyword only we can't like pass the values through position and we'll have to say c equals to 7 d equals to 8 etc yeah okay uh next we are on recursion so recursion is very like interesting and it's like a bit complex for people who are doing first time have you done recursion no i've not done okay it's all right so basically what recursion is it's basically calling a function inside of a function now over here we have this try recursion method now what we are doing when we call this try recursion method inside of itself then it's known as recursion now you might be thinking if we are calling a function inside of itself then it will like go into an infinite loop that's why we need a condition where it at some point stops calling the function uh, like in itself so for example we have a condition okay. over here if that condition is met then the function inside itself will be called else something else would happen would happen yeah. yeah so now what this function is doing basically let's see so it's taking in a value k it's checking if it is greater than 0 then it is showing it is saying result equals to k plus try recursion k minus 1 for instance we start we start over here we say try recursion 6 so this function is getting 6 now 6 is greater than 0 so it is going over here it is saying result is equals to k plus try recursion k minus 1 so k is 6 in that case plus try recursion k minus 1 that is uh, that is passing 5 to try recursion now now it won't move to the print statement until and unless it has evaluated the value of this variable now it has to evaluate the value of try recursion 5 try recursion 5 when we pass it will check that if 5 is greater than 0 that is true so it will go in and it will say result is equals to k plus try recursion k minus 1 so now k is 5 it is 5 plus try recursion k minus 1 that is try recursion recursion 4 next 4 will be passed the same state uh, same thing would be checked and uh, then it will be 3 uh, sorry 4 uh, then it will be 3 then it will be 2 then it will be 1 and then finally when it will be 0 then it will just break out so what is happening basically is when it when it goes to 6 when it goes to 6 it will go over here and will say 6 plus try recursion uh 6 plus try recursion 5 and right now when it yeah. print, prints the result uh basically I, at first uh i what like uh at first uh, what i thought was that it won't print over there but now as we can see it is printing So it is first printing one, then it is printing three, then it is six, then ten, then fifteen, then twenty-one. So it is printing the sum of all these numbers that we have. So we pass six. If k is greater than zero, so six plus try recursion k minus one, so plus five, plus four, plus three, plus two, plus one, plus zero. So in the end, if we add, we are getting twenty-one. So on zero, when result is zero. 
or when k is zero, it will not go in this if statement. It will go in the else statement. It will say result is equals to zero, and then it will return that result. So we are first getting one, then three, then six, then ten, then fifteen, and then twenty one. Why? Uh, as you can see, this is in reverse order. Why? Because when when uh, basically one is passed to this, then it will check if k greater than zero. That is true. So it will say result is equals to k plus try recursion zero. So it will say uh, like result for it is equals to one plus try recursion zero. And try recursion zero is basically returning zero. So result will be one plus zero. That is one. Then it will print one for that that basically like that function call. So it will print one for that function call. Then it will return the whole result one. Then then what will happen when it will return the whole result one? Then our result will be two plus one. So two plus the previous result. So it will it will show three. It will print result and then it will return this whole result. So basically, I think. Uh, like how I have explained, uh, you might not have gotten the hang of it. So let me just go through this once again. So when we are passing six, it is checking if six is greater than zero. That is basically yeah. that is true. So it will say result is equals to six plus try recursion plus. try yeah. recursion five. Now add. Now it will not go to the print statement right now. It has to evaluate the whole thing. So try recursion five will be five plus try recursion four. Uh, let's yeah. just, let's just name this function x because then it will be easy. So x four. Now. Yeah. Now when we say when we say x four that is four plus x three. When we say x three, it yeah. is three plus x two. Three plus x two. And then when we say uh, uh, x two, that is two plus x one. And it's when we say x one, it is basically um, one plus x zero. And x zero is basically zero. So our final zero. result yeah. will be this. But how are we getting all this? When we are on the recursion part when we are passing this function one then it will check one greater than zero it will say result is equals to result is equals to one plus plus try uh, x zero and x zero will be zero now when it finds the value of result when we are passing one to it so this result is when we are passing one to the function so when we are passing one to the function, this is what the results value will be. When it finds the final value of result and it does not find this function call in the result, it will go, it will print the result, then it will further return the result. So it will return the result to be, be used by the previous function call that was x2. So x2 will be 2 plus x1 that we saw x2 is 2 plus x1 right and x1's yeah, value yeah. we just found was 1 plus 0 next it will print this result as it has gotten the final value of result and then it will return result so for x3 it is 3 plus x2 and x2 is this so it is 3 plus x2 then it prints that then for x4 it is 4 plus x3 and x3's whole value is this. So 4 plus x3. Then for x5, it is it is 5 plus x4 and x4 value we have already found. It is this. And then finally, when we have x6, then it is 6 plus x5 and x5's value is this. So in the end, it gets we get 21 of the first function call that we made. We are getting 21 for the func first function call that we made that is being printed and that result is also being returned and we can then save 21 say in some variable z and we can print z for instance so we'll get 21 once again yeah understood yeah so uh, i just wanted to make uh, sure that you understood how we are getting first one, then three, then six, then ten, then fifteen, then twenty-one. 
So this is uh, basically a complex to- uh, like topic. So I'll like this one uh, recursion example that is the Fibonacci in- example. So basically yeah yeah Fibonacci series yeah. So uh, like it's like kind of an exercise or maybe a practice for you. So you can basically in your free time write a program to like uh, use recursion Print. for printing the Fibonacci series. Okay, I will do it. Yeah. So we can like look at that in the next class. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So now we are on lambda. So lambda is basically used to create anom- anonymous functions or basically when you want a function inside of another function then you can use lambda or or uh, basically if you want to create a very small function like a one liner function then also you can use lambda it only has one expression for example like you created using the lambda keyword it's like a mini function you can say so you have the lambda keyword you say a so it will take an argument a note there is no name for a lambda function the name basically that through which we will use this lambda function is the variable name that we save it in that is x we are not giving it a normal name like we do to functions we are saving it in a variable and we are going to access it through that variable name that is x now this lambda function is taking in an argument a or parameter a and this is the expression that will execute and what value will be returned so it is basically returning a plus 10 so for example we say x 5 so a's value is 5 and this will return 5 plus 10 5 plus 10 is 15 and that will be printed so 15 is printed is this fine yeah yes yes understood okay so we can also uh, like have multiple arguments so like a comma b right and uh, basically we can like do some other like we can execute like we can have some other operation also or we can have some other expression over here for example we are multiplying a and b next we have we are taking three arguments a b c and we are basically adding them and returning the result so when we say 5 plus 6 plus 2 then it will give us 13. okay understood so why do we use uh, lambda functions basically it's uh, uh, basically when we uh, use lambda functions it is used to create an anonymous function inside of another function so uh, like basically what happens is your like this is a my function for example and we have we are returning a lambda function inside of it so, uh, uh, so what will happen we are there is this my doubler that will save the lambda function that is the return value and we are passing 2 so what this lambda function is doing it is saying lambda a a into n n's value is 2 so my doubler now will always multiply whatever number is passed to it by 2 so whatever number we pass my doubler it will multiply it by 2 and now okay. what we have seen is that the value of this parameter finishes after the function call has ended once this function call has ended for example my func and basically we say uh, like x is equals to 5 <coughs> sorry uh, so when we say x is equal to 5 for example so basically this x variable will exist while the function is being called and once the function call has ended this x value uh, basically this x variable will be garbage collected so basically it would be removed and won't be present inside of our program and uh, it won't be in the memory anymore but the same should happen with n but it is still accessible to the lambda function the value of n is still accessible to the lambda function and it is only accessible to the lambda function after the function call of my function has ended 
so when we pass true to it after this function has ended nothing else in the function instead of this lambda function has access to the value of n okay understood so n is only accessible by uh, this lambda function and this is the power of the lambda functions even though n will not remain after the function call it will be still private to the lambda function and it would be still accessible okay. by the lam lambda function okay understood yeah so if you have like any doubts the, like lambda and that function recursion part was a bit complex so if you have any doubts then you can yeah. like ask yeah yeah i'll try them out now once on my own then i'll get doubts and then i'll ask you tomorrow okay so yeah. We, right now I'm understanding everything whatever you're saying, but जब खुद से try करूँ मेरा then I get like if I get any complex things then I'll ask you. Yeah, that's great. So now basically we can pass any value in this instead of two we can pass three, four, five, anything. And now here when yeah. we create two instances of that function. or basically when we call this function two times and the lambdas functions two instances are be created then there is the real thing it is the real thing so to create like a doubler function and a tripler function through lambda also what we would have to do we'll have to create if we are doing it the normal way then we'll say lambda this is lambda a into 2 and this is lambda a into 3 and then we'll use them normally but now having this one my function we can just basically say my function 3 my function 2 so what this will do this will return us the lambda function with the n value being whatever we pass the my function okay so, yeah so Uh, basically two separate lambda functions are being re returned my doubler is a separate lambda function my tripler is a, sub a separate uh, lambda function and basically they will multiply whatever we no the number we pass to them by this number yeah. that we pass to my func my func yeah yeah understood yeah next we have arrays so there are some there are lists and there are arrays now arrays are very similar to lists there's just this one difference that is that in an array you can only have the same data type value so in lists we saw that we could have like boolean number string in the same list but in arrays we we will have an array of strings or an array of numbers or an array of booleans but we can't mix match values okay yeah. so basically all other things are the same it's just this that uh, the data type inside an array should be same uh yeah and also there are some like uh, arrays are used for some complex task uh, tasks so there's this library known as numpy and uh, uh, we use arrays when imp after importing numpy so numpy provides us with the arrays to provides us the functionality to work with arrays and uh, basically it's used for some complex task that we are doing with numpy and we have numpy over here also we have numpy over here yeah there is this numpy tutorial also so we can we will not do the whole numpy tutorial because then python won't be too long uh, would be too long but numpy is powerful yeah. so we'll go through it once as it is used when working with machine learning and all of that stuff okay understood yeah so like, right now we we are going to work with arrays like we are working with lists so we are not going to import any numpy or anything because this is the w3 schools editor but to work with arrays we actually have to include numpy in our program first so okay so with that numpy we cannot use an array like on its own 
नो बिकॉज एन अरे इज ओनली प्रोवाइडेड बाय नम्पाई टू अस सो वी आर लाइक यूजिंग अरेज एज लिस्ट राइट नाउ बिकॉज दे आर वेरी सिमिलर बट लाइक यू एक्चुअली हैव टू इंक्लूड नम्पाई फर्स्ट सो इट्स अ स्पेशल वेरिएबल विच कैन होल्ड मोर देन वन वैल्यू एट अ टाइम If you have a list of items, storing cards in a single variable would look like this. However, if you want to loop through the cards and find a specific one, you can create an array. But basically, like an array, like this explanation says that an array is all like the same as lists, even though that's not the case. Uh, an array will only have values of the of a single data type. So. we can access through indexing we can change values through indexing we can access we can get the length of the array through the length method all that we like saw in lists we can uh, loop through array elements using the normal for loop like we saw in lists and uh, we can also use the yeah. append method the pop method the remove method these are all list methods and the array yeah. methods are all the same that we saw in the list methods Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was basically very quick because there was only one difference. Now we are on classes or objects. That is very new. So basically, Python is an object-oriented programming language. So there are two types. There's this functional programming language where everything is represented as a function. so for any anything you want to store or like to represent anything you will have to create a function but modern day languages they are mostly object oriented so what object oriented so an example of uh, this function language so i i remember it's i think it's c sharp so c sharp i think so is a function not like all the common ones they are all uh, function okay. they are all Uh, object oriented yeah the famous and the most used ones are object oriented okay okay understood yeah uh, i think kotlin was also one uh, functional programming language so never even heard these names <laughs> oh basically there are like like 10000 programming languages over 10000 programming languages so it's not possible for oh like one to basically even like remember the names of all the languages yeah exactly true <laughs> true yeah so basically how many languages do you know sayan uh like around 20 oh my god kab yeah. se kar rahe ho aap coding like मुझे तो लाइक फाइव इयर्स हो गए फाइव सिक्स इयर्स नाइस गुड ब्रो अच्छा है और भी सीख लो एक दिन शायद टेन थाउजेंड आ जाए लाइक इट्स नॉट ह्यूमनली पॉसिबल अगर लाइक एवरी डे एक लैंग्वेज करूं तब भी टेन थाउजेंड तब भी हाँ या सो मेजर प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस में लाइक देर इज सम फीचर डिफरेंसेस एंड बेसिकली देर आर द मेजर डिफरेंसेस ऑफ सिंटेक्स द कॉन्सेप्ट्स आर द सेम ओके ओके अंडरस्टैंड या सो ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज बेसिकली एवरीथिंग इज रिप्रेजेंटेड एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट सो लाइक लिस्ट्स वी क्रिएटेड डिक्शनरीज वी क्रिएटेड and now like they were all objects of the list constructor or the dict constructor and with the strings that we created th- those were objects of the string constructor integers were objects of integer constructor method and so on that we already saw in these uh, chapters so yeah we can through classes like we are creating our own constructor method so like we had the list constructor method so for example y equals to list 5 oh uh, sorry for a list we'll say like 2 comma 3 so list is a constructor method similarly the my class that we have created we have created a constructor method to create objects of this class 
token yeah so how do we create an object we basically say like if we have my class x e and it's basically saying x equals to 5 then what we are saying we are saying p1 equals to my class so like uh, if you wanted to create a empty list we would have said uh, m is equals to list and this would have created an empty list and i'm basically going comparing how a python provided object uh, like this constructor method or this class uh, or this constructor method and we are comparing the constructor method so i'm just comparing both the constructor methods so you get an idea of the similarities and how everything works so like we have by like we have the list constructor method that's creating an empty list my class is basically creating an object of the my class class and p1 is the object and when we say p1.x it's like a property of uh, like the my like of the my class object so like we had if we created a list and we said m.append it was a method of the of the list uh, of, of the object created through the lift list constructor similarly x is a property of the object created by the my class constructor so is this clear okay. yes okay so similarly we can create methods also that we'll see for example using the def keyword we'll create methods also that will be like further down so first we have the init function so basically the init function is on two underscores at the start and two underscores at the end so okay. the, over here the class was very simple there's no use of this class like there's no method yeah. there is nothing so to create a class that we will actually use we'll have to understand the built-in function that is in it so this all classes have this function all all the classes will have this init function and we like in most classes we define this init function and this basically initializes the v values of the properties and uh, basically like properties of the class so for example in init function we have self name and age so now you must be noting that we it's taking in three arguments but we are giving only two so to first of all to give arguments to the init method we basically just give it when we are creating the object and uh, and you must be noting that we are not giving three values we are giving only two that's because whatever yeah. is the first parameter over here its value will be this object so okay. self's value will be p1 so what's the use of that it is basically saying that p1 dot name is equals to the name that we pass and p1 dot age equals to the age that we pass so when we see p1 dot name p1 dot age we'll get john and 36 yeah yeah okay yeah so then we have the string function also so like this the string str function is basically used to like uh, like control that when our object is represented as a string so you remember that we could convert anything to a string a list a yeah. number everything so if we create if we convert our custom object into a string then then what should happen with our uh, like object that's what's the str underscore underscore str underscore underscore method controls so uh, okay. like for instance if we are given the str method over here it will return self dot name self dot age so when we print p1 so everything is printed as a string basically the print function converts whatever we give it into a string and then prints it so everything is printed yeah. like like as a string so when we print p1 the str method is saying that to show self dot name self dot age 
so it is showing john brackets 36 because that's what we are trying to return from the underscore underscore str underscore underscore method yeah now this is string formatting that we saw in the strings chapter like like putting the value in the curly braces and uh, adding f before the string yeah i remember yeah so over here without without the str method we are getting this and this is like if someone tries to print our object uh, then this is not something that is readable to the common person so we have like through the string method returned something that is much more readable for someone who will be executing our program okay so this was the underscore underscore string underscore underscore method now we can create custom methods also without these underscores so these underscore methods were some special methods like the init was uh, init method was to initialize the properties and uh, the str method was to like uh, like when our object is treated as a string then what to return that's what the str method was doing now we can create our own functions like the list constructor when we use the list constructor like for example m is equals to this and uh, we say like m dot pop or we say m dot append so these are all methods of this object m so we can also create our custom methods for example my func and this will need self why self because basically when we are like accessing properties like name and uh, age then we'll need self because we have like initialized these properties on that specific object so on that we will access the property of that specific object also because we can have multiple objects right we can have p1 p2 yeah. uh, and p3 so if we don't give self then the program won't know that whose name to take what should be the value of name what should it be taken from p1 or should it be taken from p2 so that it won't be able to recognize so self basically say, like tells us from which objects uh, should the value of the property be taken so when we say p1 dot my func uh, p1 is passed to this my function and when we print hello my name is self dot name self dot name is john so it will sh show hello my name is john Okay, okay, I yeah. understood. Okay. So it's basically a reference to the object that we create and is used to access variables or properties that belong to the class. So uh, now yeah. they are explaining the self parameter. They are basically saying that it's not needed, that it should be always named as self. That is just a convention and how mostly people name it. You can have X, Y, Z, any name over here and you'll use that over here in that specific function. Now over here, if you're using Y in the init method, then it's not required that you use it in other methods also. For example, we have said ABC over here and ABC is the value of the object and uh, we are using ABC.name. Basically, it's saying that self should not be named as self. I, like it it can be named as anything anything yeah okay and uh, uh, basically they are mentioning this because in other languages like javascript in when working with classes and objects there is something called as this which is very similar to the self that we are using over here so that's why there's in, in yeah. javascript you need to use the this keyword only but in python you can use any like name you want to okay understood yeah so we'll continue tomorrow as there's like less than one minute left yes yes okay okay thank you so much thank you bye 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 bye